Okay. Now, the other sort of new calculation that we want to look at, and another type of equilibria that we haven't seen before, um, is called solubility equilibria. So previously, um, we talked about solubility rules and how certain salts are soluble in water and certain salts are insoluble in water, and that turns out to be a dramatic oversimplification. Um, the compounds that we characterized as insoluble are really partially soluble, and that solubility is governed by an equilibrium constant. So calcium fluoride, when it's placed in water, will partly dissolve. Some of the calcium will dissolve, some of the fluorides will dissolve, end up in aqueous solution, and there's an equilibrium constant that we can use to describe that equilibrium. Now, the subscript SP here is for solubility product, so this is called a solubility product constant. The way we define these is exactly the same as we've been doing for the other equilibrium constants we've seen. In this case, it's going to be the concentration of the products, so we got one mole of calcium, and we have two moles of fluoride, so fluoride is going to be squared. Now, don't forget the squared. It's kind of easy um, after going through acids and bases where all of the stoichiometry is one to one to one to forget the exponents in here. Now, one of the things that makes these problems maybe a little more straightforward is one side of the equation is always a solid. So we don't need to have a bottom of the fraction here. There's no denominator to worry about in this expression. Um, now, one thing we do have to keep in mind, though, that's a little different, is when we're describing solubility, what we're describing really is how much calcium fluoride dissolves. So as we try to set um, variables here, like x, we want to keep that in mind. What we're trying to solve for is how much of this dissolved. That can kind of help in identifying what to call x and which other components we'll have to fraction based on stoichiometry of the reaction. Um, so in this case, looking back at the reaction, we don't really need an ice chart here, right? Initially, there are no products. Um, so the change is going to be what the concentration is at equilibrium. Um, so for every calcium fluoride that dissolves, I'll get one calcium. So I'll call calcium X. Now, for every calcium fluoride that dissolves, I would get two fluoride ions. So I'll call that one 2X. We get to equilibrium. Now, if I solve for X, it will be the concentration of calcium fluoride that dissolves in this particular situation. So if I take the KSP here, 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11th, my calcium concentration would be X, my fluoride concentration would be 2X, and now I need to square that whole thing. And most common mistake here, forgetting to square the 2. Right? And then your, your answer is off by that whatever that particular factor is. So. Simplifying here, 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11th, square that whole thing would be 4x squared times x would be 4x cubed. Okay, if I divide through by 4 here, that would be 9.75 times 10 to the minus 12th is equal to x cubed. Right Now you should be able to find a cubed root on your calculator, or at least uh, be able to figure out how to do that take the cubed root here and we find that x is equal to 2.1 times 10 to the minus fourth. Right? That's a molarity, right? It's in how many moles of our calcium fluoride dissolve per liter of water present. That is what we would describe as the solubility of the solid that we're looking at, calcium fluoride. Okay. Now, sometimes I think those are really straightforward, and we should probably start with that before we go into the more complicated equilibria. But, but again, watch out for squaring, cubing, um, and then solving for that higher order root. Now, the next two problems here are, are related, and they're common ion problems here as well. So let me start with the reaction that we're looking at here. Calcium fluoride is dissolving to give us aqueous calcium and aqueous fluoride two parts to this second part. Part A, we have a common ion in terms of calcium. Part B, we have a common ion in terms of fluoride. So for part A, what's going to change here is instead of X and 2X for our concentrations, part A, we're told we're dissolving the solid calcium fluoride in a solution of calcium nitrate. If solution is 0 0.01 molar in calcium nitrate, and there's one calcium per formula unit, then for part A, we're going to have a concentration of 0.01 molar 
calcium. Now we still are going to want to call fluoride x here, so we'll call that 2x. Again, if we solve for x, that will be the solubility of calcium fluoride. So probably don't want to call that one x, because then what you really want to solve for would be 1 half x. For part b here, we have a common ion in terms of the fluoride. Um, if we add sodium fluoride to the solution, we'll have extra fluoride, and that means the concentration of fluoride in the solution would be 0 0.01. We have to use our variable to solve for the calcium concentration. Okay? Now, 0 0.01, don't throw an extra 2 in there because there's a 2 in the stoichiometry. That 2 is going to show back up when we go to solve the equilibrium constant expression for part B. Okay, coming back to part A, now that we know the variables to plug in there, Ksp here is still 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11th. But when we go to plug in, our calcium concentration is 0 0.01, and our fluoride concentration is 2x, and again, don't forget to square that. So solving that out, 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11th, and 2x squared would be 4x squared, so this would be 0 0.01 times 4x squared. Divide through by 0 0.01, divide through by 4, right? and then take the square root. So I think we can do all of that in one step. Would give us x is equal to 3.1 times 10 to the minus 5th molar. Now notice that's a lower number, right? 10 to the minus 5th versus 10 to the minus 4th. So having some of the product, calcium in there, has shifted the equilibrium back toward the solid. Not as much of the solid um, dissociates. So lowers solubility. Now part B is similar here as well. KSP is still 3.9 times 10 to the minus 11th. But in this case, we've got X for our calcium concentration and we'll plug in 0 0.01 for our fluoride concentration. Now we do still have to square that because of the 2 back in the uh, balanced equation for that reaction. So solve for x here, right? so we're just going to divide, you know, we could square that out and then divide, or you could just divide twice by 0 0.01 um, and solve for x, so that would mean x is equal to 3.9 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. So even lower, right? two orders of magnitude about lower than the calcium version. So even lower solubility. So what you can see here is how the squared term affects how fluoride ion affects the solubility to a greater extent than added calcium ion. And with that common ion, we get even less of the solid dissolving.